Hey guys, this is Hemant from Edureka. Welcome to this session on Google Cloud Platform. Today in this session, we are going to discuss about what Google Cloud Platform is and what are its various services. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the agenda to see what all we'll be covering in today's session. So we'll start this session by first discussing what is cloud computing and then move on to discuss the various cloud providers which are out there which provide you with the cloud computing service. Right? After that, we're going to pick one of these cloud providers, which is Google Cloud Platform, and discuss its various services. After that, I'm going to teach you guys what are regions and what are zones, and how it is related to Google Cloud Platform. And towards the end, we'll be doing a hands-on, wherein we'll be deploying a first server in the Google Cloud Platform console. All right? So guys, this is our agenda for today. I hope it's clear to you. So without wasting any time, let's move on and start with the first topic of today's discussion, which is what is cloud computing? So cloud computing is the use of remote servers on the internet to store, to manage, and to process data rather than doing it on your own servers or computers. All right? Basically, you're doing storage, you're doing processing, and you're doing managing of data on somebody else's server, that is you're renting servers from a cloud provider and you're doing these tasks on those servers rather than using them or doing them on your own computers or servers. This is what the cloud computing model is all about. Now this cloud computing model, this, this business model is actually given to you by a lot of companies, right? A lot of companies gives you the cloud computing service. These companies are called the cloud providers. Now let's look at the various cloud providers that are out there in the market right now. So you have AWS, you have Google Cloud Platform, you have Microsoft Azure, IBM Cloud, DigitalOcean, Rackspace, VMware, Telemark, and Trident. Right now, among these, the top three cloud providers are Amazon Web Services, then you have the Google Cloud Platform, and then the Microsoft Azure. Right, but why are we learning about Google Cloud Platform today? So, let's shed a light on that. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you guys must have used one or each of these services every day in your life. Right, Google search. I'm pretty sure that even a 14 year old or a 12 year old who has just introduced to the internet, the first thing he'll be introduced to is google.com. Right, then we have YouTube, you have Gmail, you have Google Drive, Organizer, Hangouts, etc. There are a host of services that Google has to order. But what is the point? My point is that uh, you know, even for checking the internet, what do you do? Most of the people they just type in google.com to check if their internet is working or not. Now, what might be the thinking around this? The thinking around this is you're assuming that Google will work if the internet is working. You, you would never assume that Google will not be working. Isn't that something weird, right? Because Google itself is a service, right? And you know, it's, it's managed by humans. And humans, they tend to make mistakes. But still, we always assume that Google website will always be up and running so much so that we check our internet connection by going to google.com now what if i told you guys that the technology behind google.com or the technology behind google search is actually or the infrastructure behind a google search is actually google cloud platform isn't it awesome and they're giving the same kind of platform the same kind of infrastructure to each and every customer who signs up for google cloud platform Right. So for your application, you will get the same infrastructure as Google search, as YouTube, as Gmail, as Drive or any other service that Google has to offer. Google serves each and every service of theirs from their own cloud platform. Right. And that is the reason. And, and I think I can I cannot convince you more as to why you can rely on Google Cloud Platform for your own applications as well. Right. So Google Cloud Platform was launched recently, I think around 2012. And since then, it's been growing. It's been it's been the growth rate has been off the roof. A lot and lot uh, more and more companies are actually adopting Google Cloud Platform as they're moving their applications onto the cloud. Right. And uh, if you see the you know, if you just have to go to indeed.com and you just search for, you know, the cloud engineers who should know GCP, you will have the whole picture in front of you. So this is, this is, these are some of the reasons that you should use the Google Cloud Platform. Moving on, let's now discuss what Google Cloud Platform is all about and the various services it has to offer us, right? So Google Cloud Platform is, um, like I said, it's a cloud service offered by Google. Right, and it, it gives you a suite of cloud computing services such as compute, such as storage, such as networking, and you can use all these services for your own application, uh, for the needs of your own application to host it. 
right? And, uh, you know, like I said, some of the products that are already there on Google Cloud Platform are, you know, Google Search, then you have YouTube, and, you know, it, it speaks a lot. You know, a, a service as awesome as YouTube or as awesome as Google Search speaks a lot as to what kind of infrastructure they're offering. So this is what Google Cloud Platform is all about. Now, Google Cloud Platform has a lot of services that it has to offer us. Now, these services has been divided under domains. Now, what are the different domains that you have? You have compute, you have storage, you have networking, and you have some other domains as well. But the main domains that you have in Google Cloud Platform are, you know, the main domains which will basically can ho which can basically host any kind of application that you can imagine is compute is storage and is networking using these domains you can create an infrastructure for any kind of application right now before moving further let me quickly show you the google cloud console and how you can sign up for it right so let me quickly go to my browser and for going to your google cloud console you all you have to do is type in cloud.google.com all right over here, then you have to choose an account which is basically, uh, you know, has your Google Cloud credentials and then you have to click on console and then you will be here at your console. Now, how can you sign up for this console? Let me shed a light on that as well. So, like I said, just go to cloud.google.com, right? And over here, you'll have an option for try it free. Now, when you say try it free, so Google Cloud has an amazing option called the free tier. So under the free tier, you basically get $300 worth of credits which are valid for one whole year, right? And you can use these credits to basically deploy any kind of service on Google Cloud and you will be basically using it for free until unless you exhaust your $300 credit, right? And I'm pretty sure, guys, you won't be exhausting it until and unless you use it for your business because the most basic computer on Google Cloud is, you know, it's, it's I think it's one vCPU and with one gig RAM. And the price of that CPU or the price of the system is as low as $0.05 an hour. Right, so I'm pretty sure this $300 worth of credits is not going to go anywhere. So you can be rest assured that you know you can use it for learning Google Cloud Platform and knowing about various services, launching various services, and getting to know about them. And this is what we are going to do in the further sessions as well. So, like I said, for signing up for Google Cloud Platform, all you have to do is click on Try It Free. Once you click on Try It Free, uh, you, the next page is going to give you this sign in login page where you, wherein you have to just put in your gmail id or your google accounts id right so let me put in my uh, google accounts id so it's shaman's shady94 at gmail.com once i do that i'll click on next it lasts for my password so let me give my password over here i click on next right it will ask me a two-step verification let me enable it and it's done Right. So once you enable it, the next screen is basically going to show you this page. Uh, let it load. All right. So over here, you just have to fill in the details. Um, you know, uh, if you want to update from Google, you can click on probably yes. If you don't want them, you can click on no. Then you have to agree to their terms and conditions and then click on agree and continue. Right. The next page is going to basically ask you what kind of account type are you looking at? Is it a business or individual? Now, since you guys will be, you know, learning GCP and uh, all you have to do is, uh, you know, you, you want to do demos on Google Cloud Platform, you want to explore Google Cloud Platform, I'll, uh, you'll probably go with the individual type. Uh, then you have to fill in the tax information, right? So if you are a registered individual or an unregistered individual, so probably you just click on unregistered individual. Um, you you know you can give your PAN details, which are optional over here. Uh, once you do that, you will have to, have to enter your address details over here, and then the how you pay. Now don't worry, you won't be charged anything. You know, seeing this option. So the time when the three hundred dollars credits option expire, that is when when your credit expires, you will be prompted whether you want to enable the billing option. If you enable the billing option manually, only then you will be charged for the services that you'll be using henceforth on Google Cloud Platform. Otherwise, you will not be charged even if your $300 credit is over. 
all right so over here you will have to give your card details so just enter your card details and click on start my free trial and the next page is basically just going you uh, going to ask you for the verification of your card and once you do that you are set you are you, you have you'll be into your console and 300 dollars credit will be waiting for you all right so i've already created an account guys and here it is right this is basically the console that will be taken at so once you're at this console, you can probably explore the various services that Google Cloud has to offer us. You have the Cloud Launcher, you have Billing, you have APIs and services. What we are interested in, 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 in is the services, right? So we are interested in compute, we are interested in storage, and we are interested in networking, right? You have other services as well that, that are there from Google Cloud Platform, such as uh, monitoring wherein basically you, you can monitor the servers that you have just launched you can see if all of them are running fine and all the status and health checks and a host of other services as well that we'll be discussing in the further sessions but today like i said let's just discuss about networking storage and compute which are the main domains that you'll be using for hosting your own application all right so let me come back to the slides and then probably we can discuss each of these domains in detail all right so let's talk about the compute domain first so the compute domain has four kind of services it has the compute engine it has the app engine it has the kubernetes engine and then you have cloud functions so what is the compute engine so compute engine is nothing but a raw server so if you buy a new server what is the first thing that you do you install operating system on it right and that operating system is basically of your choice you choose between linux or windows and then you choose between the versions and then you say okay so this is the kind of operating system that i want to install on my server you install it and once you have installed it you can install further softwares to make it a web server or you know you, if you are you going to use it for the environment of a worker tier uh, you can probably use it for that as well or for some other purpose you just have to install the necessary softwares and it'll become that right same is the case with compute engine as well so once you click on compute engine you will click on virtual machines you will choose the kind of operating system that you want to install on your server you know you will choose kind of uh, configuration that you want for the server how much gigs of ram do you need how much of cpu do you need right and all of that so once you click on create you will have a raw server at your end which has installed the choice of operating system that you wanted which is of the desired configuration that you wanted and now you can install any kind of software on this server and it is ready to use right this is what compute engine is all about the next kind of service that is there is called the app engine right the app engine and cloud functions is basically an extension of what compute engine is right an app engine is basically used for a web server kind of configuration whenever you have an application which you want to deploy on the cloud you can use the app engine offering from google cloud right so what what happens in app engine is you don't have to configure you don't have to choose um, the kind of configuration that you want for your system you don't have to uh, look into the installation of the softwares um, which will be required for your web server you just choose okay so my, i want uh, this particular os and i want this particular software to be installed or this particular stack to be installed it'll be automatically installed and you will not be given the access to the operating system just a button which says upload all right you will upload your application onto the server and everything will happen automatically your website will be deployed automatically and you don't have to configure anything on the system henceforth right so if you compare it with computer engine say you want to deploy a php application you would have to install uh, first the apache server then you would have to install the php server if your application was using mysql you would have to install the php mysql extension and a host of other things as well right but with app engine you don't have to configure anything you just have to say okay so I'm, i'll be using the php configuration you choose that option you click on create and a server is created for you you don't have to specify where you have to store the website just click on upload and upload your website as in the required file whatever files are there for your website just upload them as it is and it will be deployed you'll be given a link and on that link your website will be deployed automatically this is what the app engine is all about now when you talk about cloud functions it is uh, in the use or in the as uh, you know it, it is again a platform as a service that is you don't get the access to the operating system but 
with cloud functions you do not host an application it is exactly the same as app engine but the use is different in the scene that like i said you do not use it to host an application or you do not use to deploy an application all you use the cloud functions is for the back end processing for example your application is a video processing application all right in what way your application is used is something like this that the user uploads his video and that video is basically uh, you know processed first and it is, it might be converted into a different format and then it is stored on the cloud right so first the website is hosted so on that website you upload a video but that processing of that video can be done by cloud functions because that's a back end processing kind of thing right so that processing need not be done on the app engine it can be done on cloud functions and why will you do it on cloud functions first it becomes a distributed com compute kind of uh, uh, architecture wherein you know even if your website is down the processing will never stop your if your processing is down probably you can deploy one more server with the same configuration with the same code and it will do the job for you so you don't rely on one server for everything right which will basically have your website hosted as well which is also doing your back end processing right this will make the server slow in a couple of as more and more users log on to it so every kind of architecture that you create you have to make it as distributed as possible the database should be on some other server the processing should happen on some other server the main thing that is there for an app engine is that it will only host your website if you want to do the processing do it on some other servers and this server would be known as cloud functions so with cloud functions the thing is you only have to give the code for the back end processing and that is it you just give the code and it will automatically see what kind of you know machine it has to use depending on the workload so if your workload increases it automatically scale it up to a different size of servers or a different configuration of servers so that it can be done in the minimum time possible and this is what cloud functions is all about all right then you have the kubernetes engine now what is the kubernetes engine it's probably the most interesting service of them all now if you have applications which are running inside containers inside docker containers and you want to deploy the docker container on cloud you can use the kubernetes engine for that container all right so all you have to do is you have to migrate your container onto the cloud and that container will be deployed on the server as if it has been deployed locally all right and this is what kubernetes engine is all about or the next domain that we have is the storage domain so in the storage domain basically you store things now there are a host of things that you can store let's discuss them one by one the first kind of service that is there in storage domain is called the data store service so the data store service is basically a no sql kind of service in which you can store the no sql kind of data no sql data means unstructured data right so whenever your application wants a storage location which is for unstructured kind of you know data kind of location you can probably store it in a data store which is a no sql database right uh, and data store and big table both are used for no sql kind of data or unstructured data but the thing with big table is you use it with hadoop applications or you use it with big data applications right so big table can be integrated with hbase and you can use hbase with you know to dump its data onto big table and it will do it perfectly so that is the only difference between data store and big table the next service that you have is called storage service which is basically used for storage all right so it's a file system which is offered by google cloud so any kind of application or any kind of file that you want to upload in cloud you can upload it on the storage domain so it's just like google drive that you use these days right you have any application you have a video application you have a ppt you have a doc anything that you are uploading can be uploaded on the storage file system offered by google cloud now how is it different than uh, google drive is that you use google drive as a console yeah right you use it for uploading it uh, on it directly but if you have applications which want to store their data or which want to store their files somewhere rather than so, uh, storing on your server like i said have as create an architecture which is as distributed as possible so why not store it somewhere else where the data is more secure right so your application can upload the files to a different location which is that is a different file system and that file system is basically the storage service that is offered by google cloud all right then you have a service called sql 
which is basically as you might have guessed for structured data so whenever your application want, is dealing with databases which are structured in nature you can use the sql service from uh, google cloud now there is one more service which is exactly the same as sql which is called spanner but the difference between sql and spanner is scalability so sql cannot be scaled horizontally right it is only spanner which can be scaled horizontally as well so when if your application is if your application needs scaling as well as part of its uh, use that is you don't know the amount of usage or you know will it will it be heavily used or will it be lightly used or the kind of users which are coming onto your website vary a lot throughout the day you can probably use the spanner service from the storage domain so this is about the storage domain guys moving on you have the networking domain now so inside the networking domain again you have three kind of services you have vpc network you have network services and then you have interconnect all right so the vpc network is basically a net cloud network that is given by google cloud right uh, so if you have two servers that you have deployed on Google Cloud, if you have two VMs that you have deployed on Google Cloud and you want these two VMs to talk to each other, basically they have to be included inside one network or they have to be included inside one VPC, right? So it's a virtual network which is created around these two servers so now they can talk. Right, and this is what the VPC network is all about. It's a virtual private cloud that you can create around any kind of instances that you have launched in Google Cloud. All right, then you have networking services. So, like, what I'll do is I'll just quickly go to the console so I can show you guys here what these services are all about. All right, so we were discussing the VPC network. So, like I said, uh, VPC networks are virtual private clouds that you can deploy around your instances and without these networks you cannot deploy an instance so any instance that you are deploying any server that you're deploying will have a vpc network surrounding it all right and there are different properties associated with a vpc network you have uh, like i said vpc network so with this option you can probably deploy a vpc network then you have external ip addresses you can configure uh, if any specific ip address you want then there are firewall rules in the sense that what kind of uh, if you probably want to connect from your computer if you want to ssh into your server so for sshing into your servers you have to enable the firewall rule of allowing your ip address to connect to that server using the ssh protocol so that is what you configure under the firewall rules then there are route tables you can configure the route tables in the networking part as well you can also do network peering you can also share that vpc with some other server as well right so all of these is possible using the vpc network then you have networking services which have uh, services like load balancing which have services like you know domain name servers and cloud delivery networks what is load balancing if you have three servers and if you want traffic to be uh, distributed among these three servers depending on you know what kind of application it is so there are two kinds of load balances basically so if you want there are application load balances and there's one classic load balancer if you wanted the network to be distributed equally among servers you would go ahead and use a classic load balancer if you want the, ne the network to be distributed based on the request that the user is making for example uh, if he's asking for you know storage upload he will direct you to some other server if he's asking for video processing he will process uh, you know direct you to some other server this is what load balancing is all about all right then you have cloud dns which is basically used for uh, naming services in the sense if you have an ip address so your your uh, server is uh, having an ip address now you will never find a website which is you know working on an ip address or in its address is give you gives you an ip address now so you always have a domain name that is a domain name is something like google.com or edureka.co so you go to this domain name and it is pointed to that server all right so this routing of the domain name to the ip address and to the server is actually what is done or configured inside the cloud dns then there is a service called cloud cdn which basically means content delivery network so inside content delivery network um, you can basically uh, you know create a copy of your server 
to a nearer location to the user. For example, if I in India want to access google.com, the servers would be obviously be in the US, right? So if I, if I try to access the Google US, so the time taken by the servers responding in the US and compared to the time taken by the servers which are in India, the, the servers in the US will obviously take more time to respond, right? Because the distance is more. So if you want to solve this kind of problem wherein your application is hosted in only one region or you know it's hosted in somewhere remotely uh, in some other country and, the, and a user base is in some other country, you can probably go ahead and use Cloud CDN. What it does is it caches your website onto a server which is existing nearer to the user, right? And whenever that user is making a request for the website, it is actually served from the nearest server that is uh, to the user this basically it decreases latency drastically and it basically improves the user experience it improves the fluency of your website and that is why you use cloud cdn then you have something called as interconnect so interconnect is basically used if you want to connect servers which are on prem that are on premise to the servers which are there on your Google Cloud platform. And if you want to include them in the same network, you'd probably use this service to do that, which will basically create a VPN, a virtual private network to the servers on Google Cloud. And then you can access those servers as if it was on your own com uh, company network, all right? And this is was what Interconnect is all about. Uh, let me quickly sh uh, show you the storage domain and again so data store has again four kind of options it has in the subcategory it has entities it has indexes it has admin so entities and indexes are basically used to identify a particular record inside a NoSQL database. We will learn about them as we go in detail about what data store is. And then we talk about storage, you have something called as browser, which is basically used to browse files on the storage, uh, whatever files that you have uploaded, if you want to upload files manually onto the storage, storage service, you can probably use the browser service to basically see what kind of files are there in the storage uh, account that you have created. If you want to transfer the files, you can, um, you know, if you want to transfer the file from some, from some online community, for example, you, you have some files in AWS cloud in the, in the S3 bucket, and you want to transfer those files into uh, your, your storage service in Google Cloud, you'll probably use the transfer service for that. Right? And if your files are too large to be transferred via internet, you can use the transfer appliance option for that. What transfer appliances is basically a device that Google sends you to your location. You can upload your files to, to this particular device and they will ship it back to Google headquarters where your server is and they'll upload the files manually over there. Right. This is particularly helpful if your files are too large to be, you know, transferred on the internet. And probably this process or this way of trans, you know, get, getting the appliance, transferring the files over there, and then sending it back to uh, the Google infrastructure would be faster. In those cases, you would use the transfer appliance. And this is all about the services that we were to discuss today, guys. So we discussed what is this various services in compute. We discussed the various services in storage, and we also discussed the various services in networking. So today in this session, since it's an introductory session, let me quickly show you guys how you can deploy your first server on the Google Cloud platform. So all I have to do is I'll be pointing to Compute Engine and I'll be going on to VM instances. Once I go on to VM instances, guys, now the first thing that I have to do is to create a project. Once I create a project inside this project, I'll be deploying the various servers that I want, right? So the first time that you log in, they will have no project configured. So this is the screen that you will see. So you will create a project and let's name the project as my project only and let's click on create. All right now this will create a project for us and once it is created we can go inside this project and we can create our first server as well all right and mind you guys you will not be charged for it because the the credits that you just got will be used for deploying these servers right so you won't be charged it is all covered under the free tier all right so once the project is created guys you can quickly quickly click on create and you will be taken to the screen wherein you will have the options or where you will be configuring your server, your first server that you want to deploy. All right. So over here you can name your instance something. So let's name it as Edureka-demo. All right. Now, 
So once you've configured the name, the next thing that you have to configure are the zones. So over here, you'll be choosing in which region and in which zone do you want to create your instances. What are regions? What are zones? Let's have quickly have a look at it. All right. So regions are basically, you know, you can imagine them as continents. And when you say zones, you can basically imagine them as countries. All right. So this is just an abstract level of understanding. This is this is something this is not what it is exactly is. So but basically just understand what it is this way. All right. So inside a region, you have multiple zones and regions are basically one chunk of country or one chunk of continent where the servers are deployed. All right. Now, why are these huge? So whenever you have application that you have deployed and to basically protect your application from any downtime from, you know, which can be caused by any natural disasters which occur in any kind of region. For example, if you are, uh, um, you know, if your servers are hosted somewhere in the Bay Area, wherein there's sea, tomorrow if some flood comes in. So there is a probability that, you know, your data center's power might go off, right? And you know, if a tornado comes in or if any earthquake comes in and the data data centers building collapses, you, you don't want your application to go down at any time, right? So you always have a backup in some other data center as well, which will have the exact copy of your application in some other server, right? And for the same exact reasons, we have regions and we have zones. So for example, you create a replication, you know, or you create a backup intra zones as well so for example your region is us yes and inside us you say okay so one part of my application is in us east 1c and one part of my application is in us east 1b so what 1c and 1b basically mean is that there are two data centers in that region and these data centers are basically zones and you have deployed your application in those two data centers all right so now if you want to be double sure about it that you know your application is still not safe you feel that your application is still not safe you can actually deploy a third copy of your application as well in some other region for example you chose to deploy it in us you can now choose to deploy your application as in asia right this is one of the reasons that you would want your application to be deployed in some other region the other reason for that could be that you know you when your application is being used worldwide right so if your application is being used worldwide for example you have you know a domain called google.in you have a domain called google.fr.au what does this domain basically mean this basically means that for each region they have a google search product why do we have different google search products probably because we have different server for each product which is connected to a central server but my point is that all these servers are in the respective countries or in the respective regions of where their audience is right so for the same exact regions if you want your application to be hosted in different regions you can use the region uh, option from configuration of the servers and this is why region and zones are basically used right so similarly if you want to choose a you a zone or a region over here you can choose from the available options you can choose whether you want your application to be deployed in asia you can choose within australia europe south america us etc right so let's for now let's choose uh, let's choose asia east 1b all right and then what is the configuration that you want for your machine do you want uh, more number of CPUs. So when you say 1V CPU, you basically mean 3.75 GB memory, right? And it will have a standard processor. If you use 2V CPUs, it will have 7.5 GB of memory and two units of CPU. If you use four units of CPU, along with that, you get 15 GB of memory. So you can choose what kind of workload you are dealing with and accordingly choose a server over here of the desired capacity. All right, so let's choose the minimum of them all because this is a demo. All right, and uh, this is it. Once you choose the configuration that you want, the next thing that you would want to choose is the kind of operating system that you want to deploy in your server. Now, when you want to deploy the kind of operating system, you will just have to click on change and you will have the all the list of the operating system which is available on GCP to deploy with. All right, so you can choose the Linux, uh, Linux OS, you can choose CentOS, you can choose Ubuntu. Um, you also have Red Hat, you have SUSE Linux, you have Windows. All right, just choose the kind of operating system th that you want and click on select and that is it. 
all right so let's let's choose the ubuntu uh, server as of now and let's click on select all right so once you've chosen the kind of operating system that you want the service account right so this is something that you you don't have to stress yourself about right now we'll be discussing in detail what this is and probably in the future sessions for now let's leave it at default and the firewall so if you are hosting a website if you want to host a website on your server you can probably check on allow http traffic and allow https traffic which is basically allow people worldwide to connect to your server if there's a website hosted on it all right also uh, let's see at the advanced options what is there so basically what i want to show you here are the ssh keys so what are ssh keys it's basically a way of authentication like you have usernames and password you have ssh keys as well so when you talk about ssh keys these are basically public private key pairs all right so one key is there with the um, you know with the, with the gcp people that is the google cloud platform people and one key will be with you right so when you're authenticating yourself with the instance basically you have to show your key and it will be matched against the key which is there with the google people if the key matches you will be authorized inside your uh, server all right so there are basically two ways that you can create your ssh key with Right, you can create your own key. That is, you can provide your own key to Google if you want one, or you can, uh, you know, just use the default key that Google is providing. If you use a default key, you will not get the key that you guys would be using from your side. In that case, uh, you you'll be probably just authenticating using the Google console. What is the Google console? Um, the Google console is basically this. So if you want to connect to your server, you can probably use the browser option of ssh right which will basically ssh you into the server of your choice or, or, or that you have deployed not using any third party tools such as putty but if you want to use a tool like putty any third party tool to basically connect and access your server you'll be basically you'll be using this particular tool uh, that is putty and for in that case you have to create your own custom key all right so how to create your own custom key you can you will probably be using a software called putty gen so just click on putty gen and it will be open for you right so this is the putty gen software now what you have to do is you have to generate a new key right so you will click on generate and you will just drag your mouse over here for randomness and your key will be created all right so once you have created your key guys all you have to do is click on save private key and once you click on save private key it'll ask you whether if you want to not create a password for it you'll just click on yes and it will save your file on the on your computer so you just choose the location where you want to store it so i'll just store it on the desktop and let me name it as google cloud.ppk all right so it will now save your file in the ppk extension format and you are set right um, the next thing that you have to do is this is this is basically the content of your files right so you will click on key comment and you will enter the name of your user the, the user that you want on your system so let's say i want the user hemant right i'll type in hemant over here and i'll have all the contents of the key here i'll just copy the content and i will paste it here all right that is all you have to do and let me save it one more time because i think the user didn't get saved so i'll again click on save private key and let me save it with the same name that is google cloud and let me overwrite it all right so my key has now been saved and let's click on close now because everything is set here and let's click on create right so it will now create my first ubuntu instance on the google cloud and guys notice the time that it takes it will hardly take 30 seconds for your server to be deployed on your google cloud platform as you see it's not even 30 seconds it took around 20 seconds to deploy your server and it's now up and running it's ready to be used so all you have to do now is use this external ip address i'll just copy this ip address I'll open the Putty software. I'll put the IP address over here. Go to SSS, go to Auth, browse it, you know, choose the uh, key that I saved on desktop, which was Google Cloud.ppk, and then click on open. So it will now ask for the username. So the username is 
payment it's the same name that you gave in the key comment all right just hit enter and you will be able to access the ubuntu server that you have just deployed on google cloud so congratulations for your first server on google cloud now this is just one way of connecting to your server guys you have one more way to connect to your server and that way is by clicking on ssh so once you click on ssh everything will happen automatically there is no authentication required it will automatically send the key to google for verification and once that has been verified you will get the same console as you got in the putty uh, you know software over here so let's wait for it it's establishing a connection and as you can see my connection has been successfully been created and my server has been deployed on it and i can now use use it as if i was using it on my own terminal all right so this is web version of uh, the putty tool uh, use uh, you know if, if you want to do, if you don't want to use the uh, third party tool if you just want to use the web interface this is probably the option for you all right and this is it this probably should do it guys and with this we come to an end to our session right so thank you guys for attending today's session i hope you guys learned something new today now uh, you know in the further sessions i would want you to uh, be prepared with this fashion session first over so today we discussed basics of what cloud computing is i gave you an overview of the different services that you have in google cloud right so if you want to learn more please subscribe to this channel and comment any doubts that you have uh, for this video and we'll get back to you in in the shortest time possible all right so with that guys i'll take a leave from you have a good day ahead and goodbye i hope you enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our edureka channel to learn more happy learning